Hey guys, so this video is going to cover chapter one, which is your introduction to health, wellness, and fitness. So I'm going to do a brief overview of the PowerPoint, just kind of hit the main points that I'm really concerned about, um, and make sure that you um, look at the PowerPoint, you're doing your readings and your books, make sure you're doing all of those things. I suggest that you do it before this video, so that way you pick up on information, or you can do the video first, however you want to do it, it doesn't matter to me. So wellness paradigm is a very big important topic in this class and there's six parts of the wellness paradigm. So there's physical, emotional, social, intellectual, environmental, and spiritual. Those are the six parts of the paradigm. Now there are two different parts outside of that that have to do with wellness, which is economic and um, I can't remember what the other one is, but or occupations, economic and occupation. Or financial and occupation. Um, so those are the six main parts of the wellness paradigm and the two parts that are outside of the wellness paradigm. So for physical wellness, it's important that you think about physical wellness as undue fatigue whenever you try and do something recreational activity like walk up the stairs. So it's your ability to be able to carry out tasks without undue fatigue, which is important in life because that puts less strain on your cardiovascular system and all of your other organs in your body. So when thinking about physical wellness, you need to think about, do I get enough sleep? Do I use alcohol responsibly? Do I put on sunscreen? Do I drive safely? Do I practice safe sex? Do I manage injuries? Do I manage illness? All of those things are part of physical wellness. So make sure that you're thinking about that whenever you're thinking about, am I physically well? Sure, I went to the gym today, um, but I only get four hours of sleep. Well, that doesn't mean, just because you go to the gym does not mean that you're physically well. So actually taking care of yourself in all physical aspects, including things like sexual nature, sunscreen, driving, are very important. Um, emotional wellness means that you can not only identify and um, recognize your feelings and emotions, but also be able to display them appropriately and constructively. So yelling at someone because you're mad or cussing at them or punching a wall aggressively does not yes that you are displaying emotion um so you could say that yes i'm emotionally well but that does not mean that um cursing at somebody or displaying anger like that is not appropriate so learning how to appropriately display anger is emotional wellness so make sure you're thinking about that. Am I optimistic? Am I enthusiastic? Do I trust people? Do I have confidence in myself? Do I have enough self-esteem? All of those things are a part of your emotional wellness. Intellectual wellness um, is, is not necessarily having all the degrees and having all of the knowledge, but people who have high level of intellectual wellness are actually creative. They're open to new ideas. They're not defensive. They're not aggressive. They're motivated to learn new information. They're always seeking out ways to challenge themselves. They are critical thinkers. And again, they're just always wanting to learn. And it's not necessarily, um, I'm right, you're wrong, intellectual wellness. It's just that they're always curious people. So think of yourself that way. Are you intellectually well? Are you always wanting to learn? Are you always striving to do better? Are you motivated? Um, what motivates you? Those sorts of things. Social wellness, that is your ability to build and maintain relationships outside of your circle. So contributing to the community, the greater community, who do you serve? Um, are you contributing? Are you giving back? Are you able to communicate effectively with other people to build relationships, not yell at them, not cuss at them, not be aggressive? Um, do you have the ability to develop and maintain intimacy? Can you um, show love? Can you express love? Do you feel love? Do you have that in your life with social wellness? Spiritual wellness is your, your ability to connect with a higher power. It doesn't always have to be um, religion necessarily. Spiritual wellness can mean that you feel connected to your environment. You feel super spiritual when you're outside and you're hiking. So you feel altruistic, you feel tolerant, you feel the capacity for love because things are greater than yourself. Um, you typically are compassionate, you are passionate, and you are forgiving whenever you have spiritual wellness. So again, it's important to differentiate spiritual wellness from religion because spiritual wellness does not mean that you're religious. So a lot of times we can feel connected to a greater power like the earth or water whatever it may be you can you can feel connected that way or maybe you feel connected to your family your friends school whatever it may be
And the environmental wellness are things like secondhand smoke, pollution, a violent environment that war is going on, or you're afraid somebody's going to drop a bomb, or school shootings. Um, all of those things contribute to environmental wellness. For example, um, students at the local high school, Swain High School, one of the local high schools, um, there are a lot of students saying they're very uncomfortable going to school because they don't feel safe. So that's a part of environmental wellness, why they don't feel safe to go to school. And then the other two I was telling you about that are not part of the wellness paradigm are the financial wellness, which means feeling financially stable, and then occupational wellness, where you're doing something that you feel satisfied, you feel fulfilled, you feel like you're making a difference, you are striving towards something greater. Um, and then the bigger picture, so things like life expectancy has grown in um, the last few decades. So the average life expectancy for a woman in the United States is about 78 years. Um, the average, well, actually it's 81, sorry. The average um, life expectancy for a man is 76 years old. So men are living longer than women typically. Um, life expectancy has changed due to um, improved vaccinations. We have come so far with technology. We've have we've come so far with healthcare improvements in motor safety vehicle. I mean, cars should basically drive themselves now. In my parents' car, you can't get another lane without putting your turn signal on. Um, we now recognize that tobacco is bad for us. We now know that alcohol is bad for us. Um, we're improving workplace safety, like coal mines. We now have more knowledge about that. Um, logging, all of those big time workplace safety issues that we didn't know about before. Um, gender differences, so women tend to live five to ten years longer than men. You, being a woman, I could cough it up and say that women are better than men, but that's not really and truly what it is about. So women typically live longer due to um, risky behavior choices that men do select. So men typically are more involved in risky and violent behavior than women are. Um, so, like, for example, um, I dare you to jump off that bridge into that river. So that's a risky behavior that men would do, be like, oh, well, okay, so I'll jump off. Um, women don't typically partake in that, and that also has to do with prefrontal cortex. Prefrontal cortex in men is not fully developed until their men are about 25, 26. And women, there's this, um developed early on versus men. So the prefrontal cortex has a lot to do with decision-making skills. Um, women also develop cardiovascular disease later in life, and heart disease is the number one killer in the United States. So developing that later in life has a, a significant factor in life expectancy. Women are also less likely to smoke due to childbearing purposes. You can't smoke while you're having a kid or while you're pregnant, so uh, a lot of times women don't smoke as much as men. Um, women also typically have healthier diets. Um, again, kind of pregnancy thing. Um, it's also a aesthetically pleasing type of thing of healthier diet. Women are supposed to eat salads um, and these new fads versus burgers kind of thing. And then um, women are also more likely to deal with their stress in positive ways. So going to the gym, going to yoga, talking to somebody about it versus men being aggressive, bottling it up, I'm not supposed to have stress, I'm not supposed to talk about my feelings, um, all of those things are big factors. Um, leading causes of death, I've already talked about heart disease being the number one killer in the United States. Accidents are actually the number one reason that youth die, so violent behaviors are the number one reason for youth um, to die at a premature age. Leading causes of death are communicable diseases, so well, there are two different types of diseases. It's not necessarily communicable diseases. So communicable diseases are things that can be passed on from other people. I like to think of it as people communicate. So you're sharing information from one person to another person. And communicable diseases, you share the disease from one person to another person. So things like viral sinus infections, HIV, um, chlamydia, all of those things are communicable diseases. And then non-communicable diseases are things that are not passed on from one person to another. They're caused by, um, they're called by virus contagions in the body. Um, they're long-lasting, reoccurring things like cancer. You can't get cancer from anybody else just by being around them. 
Um, you can't really get heart disease from anybody else. All of those things are non-communicable diseases. Um, biology in general, so biology does have a factor in your health. So men are typically taller, they carry excess body, body fat in the abdomen, which is not healthy. It actually um, causes more pressure on the organs. Women are shorter, they carry fat around their hips, and that's for childbirthing purposes. Men have denser bones, and they're also bigger, so they tend to weigh more. Um, women have a higher risk of lung cancer from exposure to cigarette smoke instead of intoxication. Um, women are also stronger immune system wise, but we're at a higher risk for um, things like autoimmune disorders, which is things like lupus, the body attacks itself. And um, women are also more likely to contract an SCD, which we'll cover later on this semester with um, that chapter so that's just a quick rundown again i'm trying to make these videos as short as possible for your benefit for you actually watch them because nobody wants to sit there and watch an hour and a half lecture so that's a rundown of the powerpoint of what i really consider to be important what i really want you to hear from me and what what um might be on your quiz so if you have any questions please shoot me an email I'm more than happy to help you um and outside of that make sure that you're doing your readings and make sure you review the powerpoint